ASP.NET Web Forms Web Server Controls Events. This video lecture will introduce you to creating events for Web Server Controls in order to create events server-side that are triggered by the user's interaction with your page. One of the most powerful features of ASP.NET Web Forms is the ability to map server-side events to controls that the users interact with on the client. If a user clicks a button, checks a box, changes their selection in a drop-down list, and much more, you can perform server-side logic. In ASP.NET Web Forms applications, the majority of your application logic will exist in your server-side code. Your presentation markup will exist in the ASPX page and your application logic in your code behind. Your web application can contain projects and libraries with classes and methods that you can call from events in your code behind. Let's take a look at how we can leverage control events to build application logic. So here I am on a page that I have created called Project Calculation. The purpose of this page is for a customer to get a quote for their custom project. Now, as you can see on the page, um, there's a little explanation that says that we primarily serve the western half of the United States. East of Colorado, we charge a flat state fee rate of $49.99. West Coast rates are less, but vary by state. Select your state below to get your state's rate. So this currently is not complete. So we need to wire up the logic for when a customer selects their state we want to display their custom price here, which is going to be the base price plus the fee for the state that they live in. So let's hop over to the code here. So this is the code behind for the project calculation page. Now, as you can see, there isn't anything here yet, but an empty page load method. Here is the ASPX page for project calculation. And as you can see, it's very basic. So if we go to the Solution Explorer, you can see that in my solution, in addition to my web application that contains the web for my site, I have a project fees class library. In this class library, I have a class for a state fee to represent a state fee, which consists of a name, a two letter code, and a fee. The constructor simply one time sets the name two letter co code and a fee for the state. These properties are private, so once they are set on the constructor, they cannot be changed. Now there is one more class in my project fees class library, and that is states. This is where the business logic exists. We have a public list of service area state fees and a single out of area fee. There are list items of state fees for each of the states uh, west of Colorado, Colorado and west. And we also set the out of area fee to $49.99. So that's on the constructor for states. Uh, once states has been instantiated with its constructor, then there is a method that gets the fee for the state by the two letter code like W-A-O-R. So we have, uh, we're using link, system.link 
here for this syntax, which we are saying select the first state fee in service area state fees with a two letter code that equals the two letter code that we are passing in. And we're performing a two upper on there just in case they pass in something like a lowercase co, so we get a correct match. Now down here, this return is using a shorthand if else statement, which says if state is not equal to null. So if we actually got a state out of here, we want to return the fee for that state. Otherwise, it is not in our service areas. So we are going to return the out of area fee. So that is our business logic. And that is existing in a separate project. So how can we utilize that business logic logic in our page? So the first thing we want to happen is when a user selects their state, we want to trigger an event that goes and calls that method on the project state, which gets us the actual fee per the state. So let's go ahead and add an event to the dropdown list on selected index changed, and let's create a new event. So now if we go to our code behind, there will be a new method that we can fire when the index is changed on that dropdown list. So I have already added project fees, a reference to project fees to my web application. In references, if we scroll down a bit, we can see that project fees is included in the Solution Explorer. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here so you can see a little bit better. Now that we have project fees included here, we can go ahead and access that state. So states, states, gets new states. Now that we have initialized states, now that we have instantiated states, we can go ahead and get the, actually, this is a decimal, fee equals states dot get fee for state DDL states dot selected value. Now, if you remember on the states, we have list items and their values are two letter codes. So what we are passing in here is the two letter code for the selected value from the states dropdown list. So now that we have that fee, we want to pass that fee into the literal control which displays down here, your custom price, LT custom price for literal custom price, dot text gets fee. Now we wanna format this as currency so it will display correctly. So we will add that. One more thing here, when we add an on selected index change event to the dropdown list, we need to make sure that we have auto post back set to true. Otherwise, we will not get a post back from that. Um, this will not get triggered. So let's go ahead and build that. And let's select my state. I'm in Oregon. So my custom price is $2.99. Now that's not correct because we need to add that to the base price. So let's do a little bit of a modification here. And we are going to change this. LT base price.
So let's go ahead and add a public decimal base price property here. And we will say that base price is 100. So on the page low, we, we will set the LT base price dot text to the base price property. We'll do a two string with currency. Save that. And down here, we want to change this to be the final price is the base price property plus the fee. And now that we have that, we will change this fee to string to the final price. That should give us the full price, which is the base price plus the state fee. So let's check it out. So select your state. I am in Oregon. So my custom price is $102.99. So let's, let's select a state that is east of Colorado, like New Jersey. As you can see, we get 100 plus 49.99. Let's check out California. California has a custom price of 116.99. Florida, once again with the 49.99. Colorado is 102.99. In this video lecture, you were introduced to creating events for web server controls in order to create events server-side that are triggered by the user's interaction with your page. Thank you for listening.